Hello and welcome to another episode of The Chain, a series where one episode links to another by some tenuous link, either actor, director, um, composer, subject matter, even a word in the title, whatever you choose. You can pop your suggestions for the next episode in the comments below or join us on our new Discord server and put your suggestions in on the chain channel there and we'll pick our favourites and uh, that's what we'll do in the next episode. So if you tried to join us for the previous one two weeks ago, um, I'm sorry we had a bit of a technical issue, uh, the pink squidgy bit, i.e. me, uh, made a slight technical error in pressing the go live button so I'm sorry about that. Um, hopefully never to be repeated. Uh, last week we were off for Valentine's Day. I'm sure you're all busy uh, being locked away with your loved ones. Um, so this week we're picking up a link from somewhere in time. Um, so somewhere in time linked back to Superman via Christopher Reeve and somewhere in time links to this week's The Undiscovered Country, Star Trek VI, by means of Christopher Plummer, the actor who played General Chang in that movie. Uh, this score is by Cliff Eidelman, who um, you know, was pretty young at the time, in his 20s, when he wrote this score, and um, it's one of my favourites, actually, in the Trek series. So um, I'm really looking forward to doing this. We're going to do the end credits suite, as much of it as we possibly can. It's quite long. Um, I'm going to uh, try and type more, talk less. But uh, if you have comments that pop up, um, uh, I'll chat to you as we go. And uh, yeah, take it from there. So you can see I've laid out a uh, template here already, put in various uh, tempo and time signature changes and mapped out the instrumentation. So we're good to go. So I'm going to crack on. <laughs> now let me just put in the chat now, testing, testing. Can you see and hear me? <laughs> <laughs> because nobody actually <laughs> commented last week to say, where are you? Uh, and I ended up spending two hours talking to myself, which was rather fun. Uh, Maestro86, when was the last time you watched Star Trek VI, The Undiscovered Country? Well, uh, actually a little while ago. Um, I've got um, the all of the movies up to um, Nemesis on a DVD collection. Uh, way back in the day there was a, a magazine part work where you could get all of the uh, next gen episodes um, on DVD. You know, the magazine you know, tell you about the episodes and trivia about Star Trek. And they also included the movies, um, and I got those. And it had a really nice um, spine art, actually, where once you had the whole collection, it, it had a big image of uh, the Enterprise and the Borg cubes and Romulan warbirds and stuff. It was really cool. Um, so it's been a little while since I've seen it, but I've seen it so many times, I know it really well. Um, and again, as I say, I really love the soundtrack, so I've listened to it more recently than I've seen the movie. Let's just close that one. And let's change that to a single pane. Oops. How about yourself, Maestro? When did you last uh, watch Undiscovered Country? Oh, look. 
in the um, reference material I'm using for this, it's marked at the top concert score. Now, I can't remember, I, I might have mentioned in previous video, um, that doesn't mean that it's a score written for performance in concerts, it means the score is written at concert pitch. <laughs> Definitely one of the best scores that I watched it two hours ago. <laughs> Been um, uh, studying up. Oh god, I better not do any wrong notes then, you'll know <laughs> straight away. Um, one thing I did notice when I was marking out this score with the tempo changes and that, um, there are a lot of annotations on this score, uh, more than any that I've done on the string before. Um, with various uh, orchestrator changes and um, various bits of shorthand um, saving the orchestrated time uh, so not actually writing out bits which are the same across parts so for instance here um, at the start we've got uh, it's, it's usually four bars per page so on the first page um, the flutes come in in bar three but here you've got um, two bars with no music written I know they come in because it says um, col oboes or with oboes so um, the notation for this is actually written down in the oboe bar um, And um, this can be most of them. actually oboe 2 doubling so I'm going to hide that line uh, until it's needed that is not required <clears throat> oh more people hello Donnie Pearson hello and uh, Bernard hello nice to see you Oh, really great piece, yeah. <laughs> it is quite a long suite. Uh, I probably, well, no, I definitely won't finish it tonight. Um, but I will come back to it and do it. Um, whether I um, am a bit cheeky and share it only with my patrons, cheeky Patreon plug, or um, I put it on my YouTube channel generally, remains to be seen. But uh, yeah, I'm a a tad busy engraving at the moment, um, working on a second full score publication, which um, I'm looking forward to announcing. I'm actually itching to announce that and the next one after that. But um, I want to confirm a couple of things to do with the artwork so that I can do a nice flashy announcement before I do that. I think a couple of people have. Uh, I couldn't help myself. I will. I will tell everyone very soon because I can't keep a secret. Um, now what we've got here? That's a do, a do many, and we've got three on piccolo. So Spread that out. 
sounds a bit. Now I'm not going to spend ages sorting out collisions and that while we do this because that's the sort of thing that takes a lot of time and right now we just want to crack on with this. So, um, interesting note there that third clarinet is playing bass clarinet with a C extension. The other thing about this score is uh, I can't see who orchestrated this, but they've got minute handwriting. What don't take as much? Like, oh, layout things. Mm. Is it really that much better? Um, actually, that is completely not the zooms. Sorry, my instruments are cut off at the edge of the page. So. On this page. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll probably make the leap at some point. I'm just. I'm busy, you know? So that is marked cold trombone one. Trombone one goes there. Okay. There's a level of ambiguity here as well. Um, um, as to what the pitches are, as I say, it's very minute handwriting. In several cases, yeah. So, um, okay. I might have to um, get hold of the uh, what do you call it? Perpetual license, because I'm really not a fan of the whole. Um, subscription thing where they can actually suddenly turn off um, your access to work or not necessarily intentionally but you know, leave you unable to work Score fan, nice to see you again. Oh, it's a bit busier in here than last week. <laughs> but then I saw a bunch of people turn up and thought I was talking to everyone, and of course I hadn't hit go live, so just seeing a blank screen, I guess everyone potted off and uh, left me on my lonesome. So, yeah, sorry about that, won't do that again. Two, 
minus that. Um, three and four are not too low. Uh, why are you complaining? Thanks, John Brady. can't quite see um, because of what's cut off the edge of the page whether base trombone refers to just trombone 4 or trombone 3 and 4 so hopefully we'll be able to tell when I turn the page because that's being indicated as out of range for this is tenor trombone um, The percussion's in a really funny order on this school as well. So I'm going to put Tim's in next. Um, oh, okay, okay, okay. So let's put an error in here. No, 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 no. Yeah. Okay, that's better. Can't have such an iconic rhythm going on, can we? Soon find out if that's not right, but um, I think that goes up. It's a bit of a splodge at that moment. Right. Now one thing that really annoys me that I hope they've sorted out in the new version of Sibelius is how the names are attached to the stage. As you can see, like here, um, where I've got one trumpet line with a second line added, it's um, screwed up the position of the names now that I've optimised it. I spend so long sorting those out, it's a real pain in the bum. Mm. <laughs> yeah, good comment, Maestro. I remember Christian Slater being in this. Um, I've got reference material for both of those. And another Christian Slater film that I've got reference for is um, Broken Arrow. John, John Woo, John Travolta film. Do I have a favourite cue or scene from Undiscovered Country? Yeah. Um, um, Sulu's response to um, Excelsior potentially flying apart. <laughs> Fly apart then. Great moment. I love that. Let's 
How full to try and go thinking. Yeah, cry havoc. <laughs> yeah, he was obsessed with um, Shakespeare, wasn't he? That uh, General Chang. Bonus point for naming the Shakespeare play. Find a friend. No cheating now. Okay, got good confirmation from the cellos here that that pitch change uh, was correct. Thank goodness, because the uh, splodgy writing in the um, trombone was desperately clear. Okay, here we go, page one. Zin. 
quick check. reduce that a bit because it's uh, a bit wild otherwise um, and is this one the one can you put in yes it is good okay what we got Sounds about right. It's recognisable. <laughs> Where's my price? <laughs> um, I have uh, a, a green fruit pastel. I'll send it to him. I'll send you a different one. I want you to tweet that one. Well, that's a page, that's it, right. We can all go home now. Ah. Staff names on Civa just so rubbish. Entirely sure what that means in the next one. This cut. Uh, yeah, let's repeat part five, I think. I think. <laughs> Let's see if I can help. Speaking of which, yeah, rest in peace, Christopher Plummer. Yes, absolutely. I was going to pipe in the um, Discord live chat to this, but then someone said, "What if, um, what if someone says something really bad? That will be back on your video forever." So uh, I'm cautious about doing that, but it'd be quite nice to have you guys actually chatting in the background. What do you think? I'm going to say something massively politically incorrect.
Let's play this and then take the and that's repeated. There's a lot going on in this school. And it tends to be difficult to um, lay out on a 9 by 12 page like I did for aliens. So. Mm. Without making the staves minuscule anyway. fun. Quite. 
it's me trying to take a shortcut. No, right, okay. Who was Kirkwood Smith? Was he the um, president of the Federation? Or something? Or the guy presiding over the, um, the treaty at the end. Guy who played, um, was it Clarence Bodica in Robocop? And there's a good score. We have a quick listen. Make sure that sounds right. Okay, so far. Was um, Kim Cattrall's character? Um, she was the Vulcan, but I always want to think she's called Savick, but that was Kirsty Alley's character, wasn't it? Weird. 
Let's get that one. Put it out as the cover toes, because, yeah. <laughs> I'd love to publish these, like the whole Star Trek series. I think the music in all of them is amazing. Even the ones which are not necessarily so loved um, as a movie as a whole. Yeah. Like the music in um, Insurrection, Insurrection, yeah, with the Baku village and that—that's um, gorgeous. And um, the Voyage Home is probably um, Rosenthal's best score, <laughs> so or in my my opinion, anyway. Oh, good one. <laughs> Shaman, that's a great link. I love the Rocketeer soundtrack so much. Um, I don't think it's any secret that um, that is one which I've applied to publish. And uh, yeah, it's a long waiting game to see if I get that license. It's been 18 months, 19 months now. Still not a rejection, so it might happen. Um, the percussion is getting into a funny order because and then this score is in a weird order. I don't normally put triangle at the bottom, but hey. Um, that is big fat. Ding a ring. <laughs> well, Maestro, I think we'll um, we'll have to see what Omni's got planned for Star Trek because, as you know, um, they're going to publish Goldsmith's score for Star Trek: The Motion Picture in not very long at all, and I'm going to be first in the queue to buy that. Um, so we'll have to see what they've got planned for the rest of the series, if anything because I'll certainly take up that baton if it's there to be passed.
interesting. I start that adding that bar, the same with that really and that. Otherwise that's gonna get a bit weird. <laughs> Space. Have you sold out completely on aliens? Well, yes and no. Um, I had a few uh, leftovers which I kept back in case of loss and damage. Um, and now that I've got a reprint license secured and an order going in for second run, um, I've um, contacted a few people who had their names down on back order to let them know that they're available. Um, not everyone's been able to take those up right away so I'm going to make the few that I've got left available on my store uh, tomorrow uh, so look out for those quick and then um, the main restock will be uh, some point in the week commencing the 8th of March so just a couple of weeks away now yeah, initial run essentially sold out, which is great. Bit of a surprise to me. And that means that um, I had to adjust my thinking for um, books two and three somewhat. <laughs> um, yeah, so I was pleasantly surprised how quickly it sold out actually. I don't know if um, Rocketeer was a flop, just not the major hit they were hoping. It certainly picked up a cult um, following over the years. There's, um, there's kind of a trilogy of those um, sort of 1930s pulp comic films that I would love to publish. Um, the Rocketeer, The Shadow, uh, Jerry Goldsmith, and The Phantom by um, David Newman. All three of those I'd like to do at some point, but we shall see. I'm going to be a bit busy for at least the next oh, six months, <laughs> shall we say, um, with the licenses that I have got. Uh, I really can't wait to tell everyone about them. They're going to be so good. Um, I've been working on what will be the next book today, all day, so I'm going a bit cross-eyed with looking at some alias. Um, I've nearly finished putting in uh, the first reel um, and I've got someone helping me out who's nearly finished putting in the third of five reels. So Actually they have finished putting in the third reel so that's ticking along quite nicely. Uh, hoping to release that early April and then book three will be at the beginning of July God willing yeah Dick Tracy and Dark Band would probably fit in with the, that trilogy of scores as well There's a few other characters that came out of that kind of pulp era that I quite like. Um, I mean, it was not a well-received film, but um, John Carter, which in its written form is John Carter of Mars. I like um, that uh, Giacchino score. And... Um, What's the other one? Uh, or Conan's from that kind of era of pulp novels and, or you know, pulp novels as well. And 
and the Spirit. That's another one, but that was yeah not very well received. Um, what am I doing? Harp. That's all fine. Synth. The same as root and half. I've never seen the um, Alan Quatermain movie. It's not really my thing. King Solomon's Mines, I've seen. That's, um, is that Goldsmith score? Young Sherlock Holmes is um, Bruce Broughton. That's a good uh, score. Um, yep, I'm using Sebago, so I'm using version 8, which um, I've just never got around to upgrading, and um, I know what I'm doing in it, so I can, when I'm not yakking away, I can normally work very quickly. Um, I've never tried Finale, as far as I can remember. I'm getting a bit old and crusty now, so I forget, but I'm pretty sure I haven't. Um, <laughs> and I've used various um, sequences before. Um, do you still call them sequences? Logic, Digital Performer, Cubase, all that. Um, um, but you know, not for notation, for composition and MIDI sequencing. Um, very loosely touched on Pro Tools um, and I've got as far as downloading the trial for Dorico. I'm still not convinced. <laughs> I mean it'd probably be great but um, I feel like I just need to crack on. You know, I've got so much work to do. Um, let's just copy the trumpet here. I haven't got time to stop and learn, you know. Um, interesting. It's actually slowed differently. Like 
on that. How about yourself, Shaman? Are you using the notation software? Or? Mm. You made the leap to Dorico? Or God forbid, you're using um, New School? for many a year. Well, there's still time to pick it up again. Considered hosting a Zoom conference chat. What du during the stream? Uh, I have. Um, as I said, I was considering actually dropping in the um, Discord chat in the background, but um, as I say, uh, my better half suggested that might be a um, an issue if someone were to. Um, say something a bit inappropriate and then it's saved on the video forever. So I'm slightly nervous about doing that. It would be nice to have you guys chatting in the background though. I'm surprised there's nothing in bassoons in that at the moment. Let me check if I've not missed anything out. No. Interesting. It's an interesting orchestration choice. Let's buy ourselves a bit more vertical space then. Um, there's no harp too, at least not at the moment. Oops. It's a little bit better. Okie dokie, here we go. This is a little bit wonky, but um, I can live with that for a minute.
his favourite track score of the original movie series, pre-Abrams. Um, uh, search for Spock. Um, but close second would be um, Well, oh, there's moments in each of them. Um, close second would be First Contact. And then Wrath of Calm. Then Motion Picture. Uh, yeah. Five uses a lot of reuses, I think, as far as I remember. Six. Oh, it's really hard to choose in order. The my favourite ones are all so close in terms of ranking. Um, it's probably easier to choose the lower ranked ones, um, but even they're not far off. I think Voyage Home is probably one of the weaker ones, but it's. It's weaker, but it's got a um, a more kind of innocent tone, a bit more playful, I guess, and so does the movie, you know? a bit more comic. There's a lot of staff renaming that I'd have to do here. This is actually just three on pick and four is not doing anything at the moment. Um, I'm just going to save myself a bit of time and not do that. That would be a fix up that I do later on. Shame that um, Horner didn't get a chance to kind of finish off that Genesis trilogy, but um, that was Leonard Nimoy just kind of getting his mate a job. <laughs> um, which you know that's that's kind of the Hollywood way, isn't it? You know, it's not what you know, but who you know. Do my kids have a favourite Star Trek film or score? No, um, they've not seen any of them. Um, I think maybe they've seen, the, yeah, they've definitely seen a tiny bit of um, Next Gen because um, I've been re-watching, we re-watched the original series a few months ago through to the Next Gen, which we're on at the moment, um, my wife and I. 
and um, I think one evening we had it on and one of the kids uh, we asked him you know what, what is this and it's like Star Trek I know what it is it's Star Trek but uh, my kids are only two four and six so I see your comment about search for spot. Maybe, but um, you know, um, I find a lot of people jump and say that uh, Wrath of Khan is one of Horner's best scores. Now, it is a good score, um, and it's got some lovely moments in it, like the Genesis Cave and the Battle in the Nebula. Um, great cues. Um, but for me, I think um, Search for Spock is a more mature score. Um, and the still in the Enterprise queue is just phenomenal, um, which is why I typeset that a while back, and I still haven't got around to finishing it. But um, one day, if I revive my Federation Fridays, or is it Federation Fridays, or Starfleet Saturdays, I can't remember, <laughs> but at some point. Or of course, if I'm ever publishing the book, that would be awesome. This year is the 25th anniversary of um, First Contact, I think. Directed by Jonathan Frakes. Totally lost what I'm doing here. Right. I need to concentrate. <laughs> Oboes. Really? You think First Contact is one of James Cromwell's best roles? Really? I like him in um, LA Confidential. I think that's his best role. Um, Place the president in quite a few movies as well, doesn't he? What are you doing, Chris? Come on. Clarinets. Said at the top, more typing, less talking, and all I've done is yak, 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 yak. Interesting. What? 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 Um, that starts there.
let's deal with that dune. Ah. And this clarinet has crept in. So I need to unhide this clarinet. And make sure we put it on the base clef, which we do. I see. Yeah. What? Uh, gosh. Sorry. Some of this must have been either written in a hurry or um, <laughs> this orchestrator's got uh, doctors, the musical equivalent of doctor's school. Who is orchestrator on this? Does anyone know? <laughs> Have you got this reference, this one? Anyone in the group, maybe? In the chat? Anyone reading along to make sure that I'm doing the right notes? <laughs>
orchestrator making up dynamics. 40 mezzo piano. Mm -hmm. I wish I had permission to um, more openly share the resource material that I had for aliens because I think um, people would be kind of shocked. <laughs> um, let me just. Uh, Can show you something. Where is it? Um, this is another score I worked on a while back. the state of this. <laughs> that was fun to work from. It looks like someone's you know used fountain pen and then dropped their coffee on it or something and half of it's rum. That's um King's Row, Corn Gold. That and uh, you know, fold lines where you end up losing half the stave. That was a fun one to work on. Are in. So horns are trumpets down an octave. In fact, it says horns are trumpets down an octave, although it looks like down 18 VB. I'm pretty sure that's not right. On two staves, so we put a doing a doing. I think Enterprise was just finding its feet when they canned it, when they leaned into the Zindi storyline. It seems to always be the way, you know, um, don't give these shows a chance to find their feet. You imagine if they'd have uh, closed off Next Gen after the first season, never gave Riker the chance to grow the beard. that coin of phrase.
Yes, yeah, so it's just not. The spiders, when, when was that made? I've never heard of that. Not miss congeniality then. Have you seen the the um, sort of documentary that he has that called the Captains? That was quite good. starts out inside a cardboard box on the street. Thank you. 
Okay. What on earth does that say? <laughs> um, passionately gliss. That's what it says. Except it's all not written like that. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, okay. Oh, this is going to give away a trade secret now. Darn it. Okay. And why does that have uh be less than that? No, let's just do that. Um okay. Here we go. Flat major on the heart pedaling. And here we go. Heart pedaling. E flat, E flat, A flat, B flat. One pedal diagram. And Here we go then. Okay. Sorry, computer's struggling for a while a little bit while streaming. Passionate glissing then. Hmm, that's cool. Um, I just spotted conductor's markings in here. Um, I'm going to snip and show you. You might not have seen these on a score before. So this. These are conductor's markings. Um, to let you know that this bar of 5, 4 is conducted in a 2 and a 3. You don't often see those on these scores, so that's quite cool. Come on, Simon. When is Avery Brooks never not unique? He's <laughs> uh, an interesting guy.
to do this with the dog cord thing, if you can hear that. So it's fine. A certain amount of doubling, which obviously makes this a bit quicker. He says this has taken ages to do three pages. Second line needs to be first. There is a seven octave line to there. We go to there. Saying it's the tricky to read. Yeah, 
Okay. So that is that. Yeah, I've heard that. I've heard that about Cisco coming back to do a series like Picard. We'll see. I'm interested to see where they take Picard in season two. Did you enjoy that series? I'm sure you've seen it. going to live on such a cliffhanger if I play it up to that point. I think it works. Well, it's not going to know how to handle FMP, so that will be interesting. Too loud, I would think. Let's see how that sounds. so bad. You notice that was only three bars on that page and then there's a VS Volte Subito, um, a quick turn and then there's two bars on the next page and then another quick turn. <laughs> So the poor conductor's frantically turning pages at this point and trying to do so without doing a horrible loud page turn on the recording.
Yes. It's pretty ugly, isn't it? Series have show Oh. 
Oh, Cliff, you just failed your dark harmonization course. Did anyone tell you not to write in parallel fifths? Send them.
that's how it grew without brackets. And that's how it's notated in the original score. Well, that end. Um, That's got a four over it, just to make sure we know. Weird. That's an interesting uh, link. I don't think I've done any. Is that um, is that a John Carpenter school? I don't think I've ever done any John Carpenter before. That's going to create an almighty clash then with that, isn't it? That would be interesting. Too bad attempts. Base granite. Orchestral Bells, aka Glockenspiel.
and some oops. What was that left on? That was on PRT already. That's good. To get a pillow snare drum and that Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, um, I stand corrected. Henry Manfredini for Halloween. Uh, sorry, for Friday the 13th. Yeah, I'm, I'm not really into the horror genre very much. I know that sounds a bit of a contradiction after doing Aliens, but I don't really class that as straight up horror. Um, 
especially not aliens, it's more of an action film. But, um, yeah, it just, just doesn't really do anything for me. Piano dynamics between the stages, of course. Saying out of range, it's absolutely not out of range for a violin. Maybe it goes into tricky range for some players, but I certainly wouldn't have any issue with that. Right, here we go. Um. <laughs> um, no interview with the vampire fan then. Well, mm, no. I've not actually watched it. Um, I've seen bits of it. Um, I've heard the score, obviously. Um, I, I'm hard on this. Yeah, see. I get the thing about horror genre containing really interesting scores because, you know, they kind of dictate in a way that you need interesting harmony in that. But, um, and yeah, I've got nothing against the scores or that. It's just the films themselves don't really do much for me. Um, what have you listed there? Wolfman by Elfman, I've not seen. Dracula, Kilar, I've seen. Um, and that's a great score. Dracula, John Williams one, I've seen bits of. That's um. What's his name? Christopher Lee. Um, Patrick Doyle Frankenstein's a brilliant score. I love that. And I quite like the film, actually. I saw that on release at the cinema, I think. Um, Christopher Young, Hellraiser. Know the score. Don't know the film. Know the 
Pinhead character. Um, the Fury, yeah, good score. Psycho, yeah, I'm a bit biased. I published two pieces from Psycho, and hopefully more to come. Golden Fool score feels a companion piece to Alien 3. Yeah. Alien 3. It's on my radar to do, obviously, having done Aliens. But um, this, the manuscript is going well, it's in the state. So um, <laughs> there'll be a lot of work. <laughs> so I have to find lots and lots of people to buy it and make it worth my while. <laughs> Kilar's Dracula is sublime, yeah. Actually, I've got um, quite a lot of um, Kilar's um, concert works as well, which are really good. Franklin Geller. Oh, yeah, of course. Oh, there would be a good link. Frank Langella um, is in uh, one of my favourite films and something I want to publish one day if I can ever track down the manuscript. Um, <laughs> the Masters of the Universe, the He-Man film. Um, Frank Langella said it was his favourite role playing Skeletor. Guess he got to ham it up. But uh, he really enjoyed getting into that full makeup as well. Uh, put me down for Alien Three. <laughs> What, for doing the note entry? You do that and I'll, I'll tidy it up. Um, yes, yeah, Masters of the Universe. Good score. Bill Conti score. Pro probably my favourite Bill Conti score, which is maybe controversial because, um, yeah, obviously with the right stuff and um, Karate Kid and Rocky there's other bigger titles than that but that I love that score oh man I can't wait to tell you about what's next Because um, well, what what is next next is is a great, is a beautiful score from a, a really good film. That's a bit of a cult classic. And uh, what is next after that is just gonna be massive. <laughs> it's, I can't wait. It's gonna be so good. Yeah, that's very true. Masters of the Universe does have the cosmic key theme. It's awesome. And it's got um, Courtney Cox in it, Dolph Lundgren, ah there you go, Lars has sealed the deal. <laughs> Oh, I'm glad I'm not the only one who likes Masters of the Universe. All I need to do is find the manuscript and then I literally, as long as I know I've got um, the reference material to use, I will apply for that, um, that license. Because that, that's a pet project I'd love to do. Um, there's a few scores like that where <laughs> You know, it's maybe not um, hugely commercially sound to do them, but I would like to anyway. But it's nice to know there's a few in there that like it, so spread the word <laughs> and uh, I'll work on finding the manuscript for it. Oh, I 
this is another page. Um, let's see. Just looking to see what's coming up. I think as we're running over two hours, I'm actually going to stop inputting there. Um, yeah. Oh, you got the note for note one. That's the most recent one, isn't it? Um, Master of the Universe is one of the limited edition scores that has been repressed most often. <laughs> um, I initially had that as a bootleg and then I've got one or two different versions. I think it's a quartet records version. La La Land or someone did a net, uh, did one and yeah, but um, yeah, they're all the same. Basically, they're just repressings of the same. <laughs> oh yeah, the post credits bit there where he sticks his head out of the water and he's like, "I'll be back." <laughs> Right, come on in. Let's have a listen. No good place. Oh my god, have I really only done 13 bars? That's appalling. <laughs> That's what happens when you get distracted and chat. Thirteen bars in two and a half hours. That and I'd get fired. I'd fire myself. Mm, okay, I'm going to put that one away in the back pocket because I'm definitely going to pull that one out again at some point and um, we'll go through some of that. Maybe I'll resurrect the uh, Federation Fridays and first thing we'll do is finish off uh, stealing the Enterprise. Um, and I've also more than half finished the um, end credits from Wrath of Khan. So then I will have done something from the first three movies. So I did the um, Ilya's theme and uh, the Enterprise space dock scene from motion picture. Um, and what have I got from four? I think I've got an end credit suite from four. Five, I've got an end credit suite that we've got. Hang on. Bum, ba -dum, bum I have yeah end titles from four and main titles end titles from five end credit suite from six end credits from seven um, end credits from eight end credit suite from Ten, which was nine. Uh, is it first contact insurrection? I have got it. I have got something from insurrection. I think I've got the main title from insurrection. So we could do quite a lot. 
and it'd be quite fun to do some of the TV episodic stuff as well. I've got um, uh, some of the original series, some next gen. Uh, got the Voyager theme. Yeah, so I think we could get a lot of mileage out of Star Trek. If we uh, resurrect that. Um, maybe that can be a Patreon exclusive. Although I'm trying to drive everyone to Patreon, but you know. It seems to be the done thing on YouTube. And uh, every little helps, as I say. Um, cool. Well, I've had a lot of fun tonight. I've um, obviously not done an awful lot of typesetting, which is a bit uh, embarrassing. <laughs> Especially when it leaves horrible layouts like that. Um, yeah, nice chatting to everyone, and, and I'll look into doing that voice chat next time. Um, as um, Maestro suggested maybe if we set out some ground rules that there's no no swearing and no I don't know leave politics at the door and all that. Um, otherwise, you'll set me off, <laughs> and I'll yeah. I don't know, I'll say something embarrassing. To say no. <laughs> oh, I've just read your comment about that uh, Batman Returns thing only written 13 seconds of music oh god I, just, I can't imagine the whole just the composing process you know, the, I mean we're just typesetting this stuff the amount of notes but then I suppose I mean I don't know how much Danny does in his sketches the real time consuming stuff comes for the orchestrators really and the copyists um, yeah the stuff I've been working on I've been working on the same cue for my next book now for the last couple of days um, and it's an action cue it's only 20 pages of manuscript but there's so much going on in it this is taking me a little while so there's a good Good school. I'm really, really looking forward to talking about it. Um, soon, soon I will announce stuff on um, everywhere simultaneously. Uh, Twitter, Facebook, Discord now. Um, and if it happens to fall on Sunday when we're doing the chain, then I'll talk about it on here as well. Um, uh, yeah, so Thank you very much for joining me again. If you'd like to uh, leave a comment below about the video itself, or if you want to leave a suggestion for a link to next week's episode, then please do. Um, I'll take a look at all your comments and um, we'll pick our favourites and take it from there. But for now, I'll leave it there and see you next time. <laughs>